Hello everybody, it is showtime on another Niho Skill Tree Guide video. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we will be going over ninjutsu and what I personally use ninjutsu for, what you can use ninjutsu for, and what you should do. But before I get into it, I want to say please like, comment, and subscribe. The closer we get to our goals, the more power I gain. No, joking, but it does help the channel out a lot. If you want to see more of these videos, then do that. Because I will always make them, but the algorithm will not always show them. Such is life. Now then, enough lollygagging and enough asking nicely. It is time to get into ninjutsu. I will also say before we get into ninjutsu, ninjutsu itself is a very... It's a basket case of a skill tree. I use that word occasionally, that term occasionally, sorry. But it really is. Ninjutsu is a basket case of a skill tree. It It is absolutely everywhere, but it does have a lot of very powerful uses. As you'll see later on, I have some very, very strange opinions of ninjutsu, but let's get into it with this mastery skill, shall we? Increases damage dealt by ranged or throwing weapons. This is strange. Ninjutsu has a lot of ranged weapons. Shuriken, kunai. It also gives you special bow abilities, increases your damage, gives you unique powers with a bow. And this is not this is this is not a small damage boost. This is a huge damage boost. This is a massive damage boost, right? Especially when using some of the scrolls we'll get later on for the bow. This damage boost is like a good, what, 30%, I'm pretty sure? Like 30% boost? I, I can't really tell, but it is so high that it, it actually matters. It actually is a really good skill, and it matters enough to be noticeable. So, if you want to make like a ranged throwing weapon build, this can be what you want. Although, Omeo Magic is better for ranged damage. Ninjutsu has its purposes with this stuff, and I think this is really good if you want to quickly deplete people's Kai. I'll get into that later when we get onto the shurikens here in a moment. <clears throat> but this can be really powerful. Next up is Enlightenment. Uh, okay. This one's a bit strange. I personally use this one because of how I use ninjutsu, but allows you to perform ninjutsus on yourself faster and extends the duration of its beneficial effects. What that means is, normally, if I say use Tiger's Run here, I set this, if I say use Tiger's Run, I have to perform a Tiger, a tiger hand sign, and then I will have Tiger's Run, as you can see. This is, that's how slow it is without the scope. This is with the scope. It's almost instant. So I personally use this just to get my buffs on a bit faster so I can do it in combat. Let's say, you know, I have multiple tiger run scrolls on me. I'm in the middle of combat and I'm, you know, I'm backing up, I'm attacking this guy. He opens up a portal, I get a couple good back shots, I break his horns, but, oh shit, wait, I have to run away as my tiger run is you know, depleting. I reapply it and I come back in. Tiger's Run is really good. It's a really good scroll as well. It increases your base movement speed. So, I suggest picking this one up. It is very powerful. I had to kill him with my lightsaber. Hold on. So, yeah. Never mind. That, my fair friends, is kind of what enlightenment is used for. It also extends the duration for something like the quick change scroll. This is very good. The quick change scroll you want to constantly be on you. This scroll basically gives you a second life. So it can be very good and very powerful. I suggest you pick it right up. So, moving on from the mastery skills now. We have Hurricanes, I believe. Yes. Our first throwing weapon skill of the skill tree. This is very important. Let me explain. So, ninjutsu has these throwing weapons. There is shuriken, 
Shuriken Shooter, which allows you to throw them in, tan in tandem very quickly. Kunai, which still works with Shuriken Shooter. Kunai Storm. Poison Kunai, Paralyzed Paralysis Kunai, Fire Kunai. Oh, sorry, I got that. Poison Shuriken, Paralysis Shuriken, Fire Shuriken, Pinwheel Shuriken. These are all throwing weapons, with the exception of a couple others we're not doing there. These are all the project projectile weapons. These all have like the first three here, or sorry, the first five. They have the same use. The exact same use. Shurikens and Kunai are very good for finishing off an opponent or exploiting a weak opponent. I don't have any equip right now, but I'll give you an example. Right now would be a time I would throw sh Shuriken or Kunai. When an opponent is low on their HP or their high, it is very good to finish them off with a Shuriken or give yourself a safe approach. You can move in, say, you know, you're at a great distance with an enemy, you shoot them with an arrow, then you move in, throw some shuriken at them, and then move in with your main weapon, heavy stance them because they're already low on Kai, and you can probably break their stance, especially with an attack like this, which is a grapple at the, at the end, a secret skill for the Kasaragawa. Go check that out. I have a entire skill tree guide for the Kasaragawa. It's the, probably the best weapon to use for uh, a ninjutsu build. They're very good, all four of these, with the exception of Kunai Storm because of its inaccuracy and it takes a lot more than a normal Kunai to actually, you know, like, ready. Your ninjutsu, your jutsu cost is way higher with these things, but they can be useful on very, very wide bosses to deplete their yokai energy very quickly. Poison Shuriken, Paralysis Shuriken, and Fire Shuriken. Poison Shuriken can be good, although they are slower. All of these, they don't, they benefit from this Shuriken Shooter, but they're much slower than, say, something like a Kunai or a Shuriken. They're much slower. But Poison Shuriken builds poison, and it does the same damage as a Shuriken would normally. It is okay. It is alright. Paralysis Shuriken, I find, is pretty useless, thanks to the mechanics of Paralysis. It builds Paralysis up very quickly, but you have other options down here if you want to be a Paralysis build, so it's not the best. Fire Shuriken is pretty good when used in tandem with the Sensory Overload Omeo Magic skill. This can be pretty good. It does fire damage, quite a bit of fire damage to the opponent. And not only that, it does the same damage as a Shuriken. So, it can be pretty good. Also, you can throw multiple of them, and so long as the enemy is not blocking, they won't, like, block the explosion. Oh yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, the enemies can block the explosion. That's not a joke. The enemies, if you're holding block while you have a fire Shuriken in you, you'll take no damage. And so, the enemies will also take no damage. It's really weird. I don't know why they did that, but moving on. The Pinwheel Shuriken is the last Shuriken type. Uh, okay. This one's really weird. It's very good for larger bosses, similar to, Sh to Kunai Storm, but there's no real purpose for it. It doesn't do enough damage to warrant using it over something like the Fire Shuriken, which keep in mind, you can equip more Pinwheel Shuriken, but the Fire Shuriken you could max out earlier. The Pinwheel Shuriken you need way more points to actually get a hold of. Uh, technically. Although you are going to buy them anyway, so I suppose there is a benefit there to where it is on the skill tree. But it's not very good. It does damage, however. It does a lot of damage and a lot of Kai damage, but I personally don't use it. Blinding Shell. We're getting into status effects that normally you don't really see. Blinding Shell blinds the opponent for a little bit. What does it blinded mean? That means, first, any animation they're in they will be locked into, no matter what, and it takes, it takes away their full turning radius with it. So normally, you know, as you can see here, I can turn while I'm attacking. Or right here, this guy. Right here. 
See how he walks onto me and he kind of turns with his attacks? If he is blinded, he does not turn. It takes away his movement opportunities, basically. So that's the best you can kind of do here with this. It can be useful against larger targets like this. It's somewhat, it's somewhat difficult to use. However, I, I guess if you want to be able to use it, it can be good. As you see, like, the guy just stabs forwards and he doesn't turn with his attack like he would normally, so you can be pretty powerful. Uh, Cattle Drops is up next. Cattle Drops, eh, they are okay. They're not as powerful as the Sloth Talisman, but it, it reduces the opponent's movement speed by a considerable, considerable amount. It's actually very good on some bosses in particular, although, hold on, this does not reduce the opponent's attack speed, just their movement speed. That is what's important about this. And I do believe this does stack with other things. But just their movement speed, their attack speed will be the exact same. Cattle Drop Ball is a bomb that throws Cattle Drops everywhere. Pretty simple. It's very good for covering a large area, but it's very expensive, so I wouldn't use it. Smoke Ball. Okay. This is a really weird item. It has a very long description. This Smoke Ball does two things. First, offline play that are not against enemy players. This will force all enemies around you to automatically de-lock from you. Like, when I'm fighting this human over here, humans do it the best. When I'm fighting this human over here, you'll see he turns with me, right? He turns with me, he'll dodge around me, he'll try and hit me, like he did there. He'll try and hit me, he'll try and kill me. What that smoke ball does is it basically, basically, sorry, makes it so that he cannot, while I'm in that radius, he cannot turn with me. He automatically locks off against me. He still knows where I am because he's still approaching my location, but if I then move, he won't be able to move with me. It's a very difficult to explain effect, but there's a problem. Unless you're at a great distance with an enemy, in that case, why not just use your bow, first of all, and second of all, this is not going to be useful unless you're at that great distance, right? Not at all. However, additionally, enemy players will be unable to lock onto you while you're while you are concealed. Nobody plays this game online. Maybe a couple people do, but nobody fights anybody, anybody online. Not a soul. No one. Not anyone. Maybe back in the day when this game first released it might have been populated, but not really. But I have tested this out against the very few people I've played with this way back in the day when this game first came out. It's alright. Being able to afford to break a lock-on means that you can get behind them a hell of a lot easier. So there you go. You can be pretty good for that. Next we get into the hemlock. The gold nut and the hemlock stuff. So let's go over this. Gold nut makes your blade enchanted with... Enchanted... Doused in poison. Specifically. Now, if you remember, poison is pretty powerful. It does slow damage over time, which can be useful. So, there you go. This this is an alright skill. It's not as good as something like purity talismans from, like, the Omeo skill tree. I would personally use those to coat my weapon. But there you go. Next up, Hemlock Poison. This adds for paralysis effect and you paralysis on your weapon. This has uses on certain bosses, but other than that, it's kind of useless. I use it as like kind of a meme thing to meme around with and have fun, but it's kind of useless because of how quickly most ninjutsu-based weapons attack. You're going to break them out of your paralysis in the same combo that you hit them with. 
so it's kind of useless. Next up is the blast beetle, uh, blaster beetle powder shell. Yeah, this is a small shell, eggshell that you throw, hollowed out eggshell that you throw, and it creates a cloud of poison to poison the enemy. Pretty simple. It is very quick with this, and it lingers for a long time. Same thing with this. Hitting it causes paralysis against the enemy. This is okay. This is okay. It's very good for building up paralysis, but I feel like the paralysis mine is a bit better. Next we get into the arrows. The stun arrow inflicts paralysis as well. It allows you to fire para paralyzing arrows that inflict a lot of paralysis on a headshot. Poison arrows are the same way, just with poison. As far as all of- I'm going to go over like- oh no, we are actually here, okay. So as far as all of these like status effect things go, paralysis is obviously going to be a lot better than poison. But it's a very big risk to use paralysis, and it can be very, very difficult to, to actually apply paralysis to some opponents, like Yasuke or Takimaru. It's very difficult to do that, and you're going to waste a lot of ninjutsu, your ninjutsu power, simply dedicating it to paralysis. Next up is healing anti antitoxin pill. Okay, this is really good one. This neutralizes the effects of poison status ailment when inside of you and gives you a boost to your resistance. So this can be okay. I maxed it out simply for one specific boss fight in the game, near the beginning. The Snake God boss. But other than that, this is pretty useless. If it did more like paralysis, poison, shock as well, then I'd pick it up. But honestly, this doesn't do much, so there you go. Next up is Medicine, 7 Herb Pills. Take these pills, neutralize paralysis status ailment, and it increases your resistance. These pills may be used while paralyzed. You, It's basically an acupuncture needle that you can repeatedly use. This can be good against the Nureona, if you're dealing with a lot of Nureona in a level that constantly, repeatedly paralyze you over and fucking over again. Other than that, there's no real bosses too good against, so there you go. Power pills are actually really powerful. They just increase your attack power with no cost. And they stack with a lot of other things. Pick these up. It's simple, easy, good. Power pills are powerful. Last Gambit is also very powerful when combined with other skills. This reduces, actually use these two. First up is the power pills right here. And then the last Gambit right here which also stacks with power pills, reduces your maximum hit points, as you can see there. But it causes you to do a ton more damage. Quite a bit more damage. So as you can see, my damage is very high for a fist bump. We're getting in the 200s to 300s there. So, yeah, it's very good. Power pills also last for a while with enlightenment as well, and the buff that this thing gives you, the buff that the last gambit gives you, lasts for an eternity with enlightenment. So I personally, that's why I personally use enlightenment. So there you go. There you go. I would pick up these two, but there's a little combo you can do, right? You can take last gambit and then apply yourself with the protection charm from Romeo magic and be able to tank damage while also dishing out good damage. As you can see there, he may have taken it all in one swing, but I'm still safe. I'm not dead, unlike how I would be, you know, dead if I just used the last gambit by itself. It's a very nice, very powerful combo. The best part is you can just reapply if you have if you have one of your own. There you go. Very powerful combo. I suggest you do that. It's very, very nice. Keeps you safe and keeps you keeps you in the fight. Gives you high damage. Really nice. Moving on from last gambit, we have Ah the bombs. Bombs are kind of useless. This part of the skill tree itself is almost entirely useless because Omeo Magic can do it better. 
I would suggest to appear with this mastery skill if they wanted to balance this a bit better, allow you to use ninjutsus faster, like you can with something like Omeo Magic, with its with its special skill down here, with its mastery skill. Right here, Awakening. Because so long as that exists and it doesn't then ninjutsu doesn't have the exact same thing, ninjutsu is not going to be good for damage. So we have bomb and shrapnel bomb. They're basically the same thing. They just do more damage and the explosion is larger. Simple as that. You can also see this one actually does have shrapnel as it throws it out in the direction, which is really nice to do. Then we have enhanced shrapnel bomb. It's a cluster bomb. Yeah, we're committing war crimes. Those don't exist yet. It's a big cluster bomb that does good damage. Against gigantic bosses, this thing is actually very powerful. Go ahead and pick that up. If you have particular trouble with the boss. I actually use this one in my in my preference, in my, in my preference of my skill tree. Let me show you what this does. This right here gives you explosive arrows. That explosion is actually very large. It's larger than you think it would be. Allow me to demonstrate. What you can do with this is get into a very good position against certain enemies. This will actually do absurd amounts of high damage if you hit them. As you can see, a direct hit on him did most of his Kai. So, yeah, this is a very useful skill, especially if you're in a very high position against an enemy, or a lot of enemies in a single area, and you can see all of them. There you go. And with the Divine Arrow, it still stacks with its damage. So it does about 4,000 damage. And about 800 damage with my bow. With my bow, it does about 800 damage. Yeah, about 800 damage or so. 800 fire damage, and it applies fire to Scorch Satisfactory. This... Ooh. One of the arrows stick around. Very nice. That's what a Divine Arrow looks like when it's on the ground. So, this is very powerful. If you then apply the Scorch... The, uh, not Scorch, the Sensory Overload ability from Omeo Magic, and then use this on an opponent within a big crowd, it could be very good. But uh, I don't know why you're trying to do that when you can just wipe the crowd out with some of the other ninjutsu anyways, but it's a strategy. It's also very good. Say you're in, like, a large castle and you can see the whole area, just picking enemies off with this with your fire damage, and, or, or at least weakening them for your approach is really, really good. Ground Fire is powerful, but unneeded. You can get it pretty much immediately with a novice skill, and it does good damage compared to your ninjutsu power overall, but you do not really need this in any way. Like any of the ground fires, with the exception of like the paralysis ground fire for a paralysis build, you don't really need any of these. This one does fire damage and will scorch the opponent. This one applies poison very, very quickly, and will usually stagger the opponent. This one pri applies paralysis very quickly. This one is useless. The Noxious Ground Fire applies the Foul Smelling, or the Foul Smell ability, the Foul Smell status effect, sorry, to an opponent. What this does is it means the opponent gets less from elixirs and they can't heal as easily. So it's good against enemy players that you'll never be fighting because no one plays this game online. There you go. Next we're getting into the Shadow Arts. Shadow Art Flame... Okay. First, the Shadow Arts are overshadowed by the Omeo Magic heavily because of how slow they are compared to... Well, compared to the Shadow Arts as you saw there in that animation, I can just do this with my Omeo Magic. Spam the hell out of it. So, yeah. But the Shadow Arts do have one thing over Omeo Magic that makes a hell of a difference. Shadow Arts apply status effects very quickly, and it makes it. They're also very easy to hit an enemy with. As you can see there, this, these both, one of them tracks to the enemy very quickly, and one of them swipes underneath the enemy and spawns on them. While the other one does the same thing, but in a concentrated area. So these are easier to hit, but do less damage and are much slower. 
Next up we have the upgraded versions of the Shadow Guards. Hellfire, this spawns on the opponent, is very good for taking down the Umi Boza from the DLC, but that's about it. This is a very wide area that is very good at taking down crowds, better than some Omeo magic I find usually. Very good at taking down crowds, so I would pick this up. And finally, this is okay. It hits a very wide area around you and in front of you. Very good for taking down crowds, especially when comboed with this. When With eight cold hells and thunder hell, you can do some good work. But then again, you can just do this. And it's so much faster. <clears throat> And does far more damage. Sorry about that. All right, moving on to Tiger Run. I would I would pick this up. You kind of have to for a lot of things I've suggested thus far. The Tiger Run, that movement speed difference is, makes so much of a difference in larger boss fights. It's so good. Quick change is a necessity in both Neo games. It basically gives you a second life when you screw up, and you can get a drop attack on the opponent. It restores about 25% of your HP total. It's very good. Catwalking 1. These are kind of useless. Catwalking 1 moves the you move in total silence. It also decreases damage when falling from high places. These are useless because it costs a good bit. One ninjutsu power is quite a bit for something you're only going to use once or twice a level. Keep in mind that's at base, but even still it's not very good because you still need to use one of your hot, hot spots. Hot spots? Hot swaps for it. Sneak attack is required, man. Sneak attack can be very good on certain levels, especially if you do want to play the stealthy ninja build. Sneak attack can be very good. It just allows you to perform a powerful attack behind an enemy. This includes Yokai, by the way. They won't be put into the animation, but Yokai will still take the damage. Sneak Thief Scroll makes you invisible, so long as you are not doing certain actions. There you go. Sneak Thief 2 allows you to get items from enemies that you successfully sneak attack. Shuriken damage increases blade te throwing blade technique increases shuriken damage, can be very good. Poison control just increases your poison resistance. Very powerful for some bosses. I would honestly pick this up if you have spare points, because it's only an adept skill. Paralysis, pick this one up. It's very good against Nureona. Nure you shut Nureona down pretty hard with this. Very good, very good, and sometimes you'll only get clipped by their by their gaze, and you'll be able to, you know, immediately counter them. Bomb making increases the power of shrapnel bombs. Very powerful if you want to dedicate yourself to just constantly using enhanced shrapnel bombs over and over on large bosses. Increases shrapnel bomb carry capacity. What does this mean? There's actually natural bombs that you can find in the world. That aren't part of your ninjutsu. I think I actually have a couple of them. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah right here. This will increase your carry capacity of these by one. So you can just constantly use them. Pretty good stuff, if you ask me. But I wouldn't pick it up simply because of how deep it is into the tree. It's also an adept, so you might get a little bit there. This is a required, man. Dodging. Reduces Kai consumption, consumption when dodging by 5%. Pick this up. This is really good. Dodging, especially in the low stance, is really good. And I always use this skill no matter what. I always want to try and get this skill. Being able to dodge more means you can get more distance. Same thing with dashing. Pick these two skills up. They're, they're very, very, very powerful. Next up, yeah. Cloud Runner as well. Pick this up. Just pick all three of these up. Just they're really good. Just get them. It's very 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 powerful. Dodging is veteran. Dashing is a novice, and Cloud Run is adept. But you're gonna have all of those eventually in the game anyway. So just pick these up. Poison reduces damage over time inflicted by poison and fire. This is kind of useless when you're when you have like late game. This is useless late game when you have something like what is it? Uh, this right here. The damage over time. The purple damage over time effect prevents your health from going to zero when inflicted with status effects. This is kind of useless once you get a piece of armor with that, or can consistently roll it. But hey, early game, this can be pretty powerful. 
endurance. It can save you, especially against Enera. So there you go. Increases damage dealt. Increases recurrent damage dealt by 10%. What does this mean? Recurrent damage is damage which constantly affects the enemy, like being poisoned or being on fire, so you increase that damage. Uh, we got a, like, back in the game's original release, well, poison was kind of nerfed into the ground pretty hard, so... I wouldn't use this. Healer is the same way. Pick this up. Increase healing. Car increase elixir carry capacity by one. That gives it life in a bad boss fight. A lot of these passive skills, like, you know, this right here, or elixir healing, or dodging, or dashing, just pick up all these passive skills. They're really good. They just improve you as a person. Use the chance to receive an arrow or bullet dealt by a killing shot, enemy's weak shot, enemy's weak point. If you hit an enemy in the head and you kill them, you get your arrow back. There's a 50-50 coin toss, I believe. And Ninjutsu Master, you need to pick this up because this will provide you more Ninjutsu carry uh, capacity, which is very important. So just basically pick up all of these that isn't enduring, and you're you're going to be set because you'll be in a very good place for the game. Combat transformations useful against other players. Also, enemies will completely ignore you. But as soon as you move, you detransform. So it's a good way to kind of get the heat off of enemies if you're running through a level to get back to a boss. But other than that, it's not very good. Okay, these are the secret ones. <clears throat> Let's go over these then. After that is levitate, and then that's pretty much the end. I'm actually gonna go over these in a second. Let's go over levitate. This is not that does not say levitate. This specific skill right here. This is useful early game and late game for hazardous effects, as this will completely negate all terrain damage and status effects <clears throat> from affecting you at all. I actually do keep one of these on me, but not in my hotbar, specifically for certain levels that I know have a problem with this. <clears throat> and next up is the Eagle Eye Scroll. The Eagle Eye Scroll in particular is very good for very good for arrow bullets. <clears throat> Sorry, about that I have a bit of a cough today. I'm not feeling well. It has it's very good for bow and arrow builds and especially from high places. The longer you aim your bow for, the higher it will increase your attack power and it naturally increases your attack power. I actually keep one of these on me to combo with the explosive arrows. Because you can apply both of them at the same time. Watch the damage this does with holy arrows against this yokai. Look at that. Three arrows and he is down. Fourth, technically, for the explosive would only make it. So, that is really powerful. Eagle Eye is very, very, very strong. Very strong. Very strong. I would pick this up, but I wouldn't master it just because the others are a bit better. And the explosive one especially is a bit better. And you always kind you always kinda need one of these, but you only carry one on you and they're really cheap. The next up is this. This is kind of useless because it doesn't have stat. This consumes your money, but it will allow you to do very powerful throwing throwing ranged attacks, sorry. In very quick succession as well. They do a lot of damage. It's kind of cheap as well because it's a thrown weapon and it only costs one, similar to uh, similar to just like the shuriken normally or the kunai normally without being mastered. But it does take your money from you, which late game isn't too bad, and it does do good damage, but it doesn't stagger the opponent and usually doesn't force them to block either, which could be a good thing depending on how you see it. But I kind of use for my specific playstyle this is bad because I use them to force enemies to block. Alright, next, let's go over the secret skills. You may recognize these if you're an avid fan of Ninja Gaiden. These are all skills from the Ninja Gaiden game. First of all, Flame Dragon. It shoots a very powerful large fireball, which is guaranteed to scorch the enemy. It's not guaranteed, but it, I have not found an enemy yet that isn't scorched by this. You are Each one of these, you are protected by a ring of magic. So, you can still get hit and still take damage, but the enemy, for this, they'll take a little bit of fire damage if they approach you. For this, they'll take a little bit of normal damage, and for this, they'll take a little bit of normal damage. This one actually does fire. Let's, so let's go over these. This will shoot a large fireball that has a good bit of tracking to it and hurt enemies. Very bad. Very bad. It is a very 
powerful skill. It hurts them in a very, very big way, does a lot of fire damage. I've been able to one-shot certain bosses with this with high enough ninjutsu power, so this is very powerful. This one, however, is a very bad one. This, the Exorcist Blades, shoots- it's very quick, it comes out very quick, but it shoots a bunch of blades around you. This is good for crowd control. <clears throat> it has a very big range, as you can see. It's very good for getting enemies off of you, but its damage is actually really low for something so powerful. So I wouldn't use this one. An Umbrian Bullet does insane Kai damage. This fires, it doesn't do quite as much damage as Flame Dragon, but its Kai damage, especially against blocking creatures, is so high it doesn't matter. So I would just pick all three of these up, because they all come from the same boss that I will show you shortly. And that's pretty much my skill tree guide. As far as my, like, preferred skill tree goes, I use only a few ninjutsu. I use Power Pills and Tiger Run, as well as Eagle Eye, Quick Change, and... Explosives. <clears throat> Explosive sparrows with Glass Gambit. Those are the only ones I use. Everything else is Zomeo Magic. Zomeo Magic is better for direct combat. Alright, I will now show you where to get the secret skills from. It's the boss that drops the most secret skills in the entire fucking game. Ren Hirabusa. So, let's go over this. In the second DLC, Darkness in the Capital, after completing most of, if not all of, the missions, I believe you have to complete all of the story missions here, you will eventually get this mission called the Dragon Clan, where you will fight Red and Hirabusa, as the Ninja Gaiden series and this series both take place in the same time, same world. So, apply your buffs immediately, because he does come out of the head of that statue pretty quickly, the forehead specifically. Now he has two voice lines, which could either make it so he comes out faster or slower, depending. But we're just gonna buff up here, and hope he does the shorter one. Yes, he did. Okay. When he does that, when he finishes that, start spamming your abilities if you have any. Like, your ninja, not your ninjutsu, sorry, your abilities. Your... can't think of the word. Your... Omeo Magic. Now he is very fast. However, he does get countered by True and Brew pretty hard, so if you have that, there you go. Oop, that is a very quick moving projectile, keep in mind. He also will try and grab you like that occasionally, those are grab attacks that he has. Our barrier is almost down, and we did not get a second one, so... We're just gonna try and hit him in direct combat. We do have quick change on, so we should be pretty safe. He is tased for now, he's a shock, so yeah, he gets countered by countered by this pretty hard. We're gonna hit him with Fuki Soul Core. Oh. Fine, I'll just, I'll just hit you with my legs. Cool. I have Shadow Clone Jutsu. It doesn't matter. Now I will warn you, he is very quick when he gets low health and he will start spamming his spells just like that. And he will constantly throw out Shuriken, but other than that, he I think he's one of the harder bosses in the game. But other than that, as long as you keep him oppressed, like keep his Kai oppressed, because he has very, very, a very shallow Kai pool. Overall, his Kai regeneration is very high, yes. But his Kai pool itself is very, very low. He will drop the skill you're looking for. Eventually, it takes a while, because he has like five secret skills here. Alright, that is going to be the end of this video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming and for watching with me. Really, please do remember to like, comment, subscribe. I'll be doing this for the rest of my life, so, <laughs> you know, you might as well see me grow. I'm so ready to get to 500 subscribers. I've got 24 right now, and I have this big sort of thing planned for 500, a big story that I want to tell. I'm really excited for it, so do all that stuff down below. I have been Shin Worldmaker, and I will see you all later.